Shalom family. May El Elyon, God Almighty, preserve you and all of his children today. Early this morning, I had a vision. I woke up listening to, um, I'd gone to sleep listening to the Psalms, and I woke up hearing the song, Eternal Father Strong to Save. It was being played in this video that I was listening, that I had downloaded and was just auto playing, so I didn't know what was coming on. But Eternal Father Strong to Save was playing, and it was being played at General Colin Powell's funeral. I haven't watched the funeral, but they were playing the song. And that propelled me to find a few different renditions of that song because that's one of my favorite hymns. I really do appreciate it, despite the fact that I have no background in the armed services or the military. I still think about this stirring imagery of seeing Yahua Elohim as a father who is eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise Elohim, strong to save. As he tells us in the book of Hebrews that through his son Yahusha, he saves to the uttermost. So I was listening to this song for a little bit and then I began listening again to 2 Kings 17. That chapter is so powerful. It is so incredible because it describes the fall of his chosen people, the children of Yasharel. And what is particularly remarkable about it is how the downfall of Israel, the scattering to a thousand nations can all be traced to one sin, and that's the sin of idolatry. The children of Israel killed their Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, because of idolatry. They did not want to serve him. How do you know that? Because the Bible tells us when it says, we will not have this man to reign over us. We read, we have no king but Caesar. That's idolatry. And Yahuwah said to the children of Israel, Okay, fine. You don't want me to reign over you? Then let the nations whose gods you love, let them reign over you. Let's see how you like that. So for 2,000 years, the children of Israel have suffered enslavement, disenfranchisement, arbitrary murders, racial redlining, health care redlining, unnecessary and racially based discriminatory job losses. All of the ills facing Israel and America and Canada and Europe and on every continent in every nation. The children of Israel are scattered and they face the same thing everywhere. It is grievous. But we see that so often today, the children of Israel commit the same infractions worshiping other deities that they did during the time of Mashiach, Yahusha the Christ of God, the very same sins. And so I was listening to this chapter, 2 Kings 17, because it moves me and I think it's so instructive. And I think the Father has so much to teach us out of that book and that chapter in particular. And as I was listening, the writer begins to give a list of the gods whom the Israelites began to worship. From Baal 
to Adramalek, to all kinds of deities who we know are actually fallen angels, parading themselves as God and demanding the allegiance and the worship and the sacrificial offerings that we see in so many nations around the world today. And as the narration began to recite the list of gods, I heard a very high-pitched noise. And the sound of, in retrospect, the sound of a window shattering, glass breaking. And I jumped up because it was so frightening. No one else heard it. And in fact, as I went around to check on everyone, I saw that no one was awake. All were asleep. And I thought about this and thought about it all day and meditated and asked the Father, Father, why did I hear that? Was that my imagination? And I heard in my spirit that that was not my imagination, that I heard something exactly when the names of these other gods were being recited. And what I heard was what you might want to call a break-in. This, these entities who I was listening to being read about had entered That's what I heard in my spirit. Entered what? Honestly, I have no idea. Entered my house? I pray not. But I believe those entities which the heathen worshipped thousands of years ago, 2,500 years ago, and before, and whom the Israelites had also worshipped, Those entities have returned, they have entered, and they are here. And the sound of glass breaking was the sound of their penetration into this dimension, this plane, coming from where they were. Were these ascending from the bottomless pit? Brothers and sisters, I have no idea, but I know wherever they came from, they are here now. So why am I here? I felt moved in my spirit to urge my brothers and sisters amongst the true children of Israel and amongst the strangers who've been grafted in through the mercies of Yahushua HaMashiach And we have to confess and admit the fact that no one comes to the Father except through the Son. No one. So even the children of Israel are regrafted back into the olive tree. The natural branches regrafted back in, as Paul tells us in Romans 11, through the mercies of the Son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Although they were the original chosen people, they fell away. And they must be renewed in their minds by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. So, this is a warning, an urgent plea to all of those who name the name of Yahusha. Please, brothers and sisters... Jew or Gentile, Yahudim or Yavanim. This is an urgent plea to put away your idols and turn to the Father immediately, at once. Because what has entered into this world is not something you want to face with a sin-hating Elohim angry with you because you are cavorting, committing adultery with the fallen angels, with these unclean spirits, these unclean 
entities. They are here. And they are here not only to cause bodily harm to all the people of the world, but they are here to drag as many people down with them to the lake of fire, which they know is their destiny. Brothers and sisters, please come back to the Father. Turn to Him through the Son. Because the hell that is getting ready to be unleashed on this world will be unrivaled by anything we have seen in the movies or in television, anything Hollywood has cooked up, anything the video game industry has shown, there will be nothing to match the unadulterated hell that is preparing to descend not only upon America, but upon the entire world. The word that the Father gave me at the beginning of this year, and which is about to be kicked into high overdrive in terms of the manifestation and exhibition of Yahuwah's judgment, is this word, death, mourning, and famine. The Father told me there would be so much death that you would not be able to individually bury your lost ones. There would be so much death that there will be mass graves that become the norm. There will be so much mourning that you won't even be able to properly grieve your lost relative, your deceased family member before someone else dies. And if you are not walking in the secret place of the Most High, covered under the shadow of the Almighty, hidden under His shadowing, protecting wings, your loved ones will be mourning your death as well. The only place of refuge is not some hidden bunker. It's not a a cushy corporate job. It's not running away from your country of origin to someplace else you think is safer. No place is safe except being in the grace, the covering righteousness of Yahushua HaMashiach. He has prepared a white robe for all those who are covered in the blood of the Lamb. So please, brothers and sisters, look, look at the things that are happening, not with the natural eye by turning on the TV or flipping through your social media news. Look to the Father and hearken unto His voice because the judgment that has been unleashed, the death, the mourning, and the famine will break men's hearts. Some will commit suicide at the sights that they see and the things they experience. Some people's hearts will fail looking unto the things that they see. Yahuwah is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into the knowledge of the truth. So I am out here because the Father has commissioned me to share His Word, to speak His truth, and to pray for His people. Brothers and sisters, turn with all your heart away from your idols, whatever they may be, whether they're people or they are places. Maybe your home is an idol. Maybe your children are an idol in your life. Maybe your spouse, you think you've just got the best wife there ever was, or you think you were waiting all this time for Mr. Wonderful, and now your husband is here and he's just all that. 
Or maybe you feel that you have a gorgeous home. Maybe you feel that you have a wonderful library. Or you have amazing friends. Or that you have the perfect church and your pastor, oh man, your pastor is just all that. I can't believe it. No one has wisdom like my pastor. Pastor such and such and so and so. And you preside over every pastor's anniversary committee. And you you darken the halls of the church every time the church opens its doors for choir practice or a Bible study or the deacon's meetings. You are there to help out with the soup kitchen. Maybe your good works are your idol. Whatever they are that keep you focused more on those things than on the things of Yahuwah Elohim and His service and His scriptures and His Son, now is the time to lay those things aside and to hearken to His voice and obey Him and hear what thus saith Yahuwah. Because the time is coming when the noise will be so loud from all of the plagues, dropping one after another, after another, after another upon your house and everyone you know. Now is the time to give everything up if it takes your eyes off of Yahusha HaMashiach. I'm going to bring this to a close. I don't want to be too long. And I thank you for bearing with me, for listening to me if you've made it this far. This is a word of warning. The gates have been opened. The entities have come through the veil and they are here. And Satan has been granted permission to allow his kingdom to unleash death, mourning, and famine upon the whole world. Are you going to be consumed in that judgment? Or will you find your hiding place, your place of refuge and rest in Yahuwah? Elohim and in his son and in the blood of the lamb. Will you find comfort in the comforter, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit? Or will you keep trying to find comfort in your reasoning and in the things of this world? The time is short, brothers and sisters. These things have arrived. The judgment is here. Let's pray. Almighty Yahuwah Elohim Seveoth, Lord God of hosts, defend your inheritance. Rescue us. Gird up our minds and the loins of our minds that we would be sober-minded and hope to the end for the grace that you have given to your children. In Yahusha's holy name, let it be done according to your word. So be it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.